everyone. Welcome to Wine.com Experiences. I'm Gwendolyn Osborne. Uh, today we are going to be taking a tour of Sonoma, uh, specifically to take a look at the diversity and deliciousness of the red wines there. So this tasting is one of our virtual webinars for Taste of Sonoma at Home. And if you're not familiar with Taste of Sonoma, it is a fantastic annual food and wine event obviously held in Sonoma, um, that kind of gives you a little taste of everything Sonoma has to offer. So typically it is a full day of just delicious food and lovely wine and really great people. And just, it's a whole lovely experience to kind of encompass Sonoma, the Sonoma lifestyle and tastes of Sonoma. So um, while we're virtual this year, I hope that if you do plan to travel to Sonoma, you take a look at this weekend. I know it's going to be early summer, I think in June next year, 2022. Um, it's just, it's a great weekend to kind of help give you that whole Sonoma experience. And um, yeah, it's just delicious and lots of fun. But for today, we are going to bring you um, along to taste three red wines that will show you a little bit about the diversity of Sonoma and um, how it can create such um, beautiful red wines. So if you purchase the trio ahead of time for wine.com, um, great. Of course, please go ahead, get those open, pour them each into some glassware for us. If you don't have the trio, you'll still enjoy this, this webinar, but the wines still are available on wine.com. And of course, this video lives on, on the wine.com YouTube channel, as do all of our other videos. Okay, the three wines we're tasting here are the La Crema Russian River Valley Pinot Noir, the Pedroncelli Zinfandel from Dry Creek Valley and the Francis Ford Coppola Director's Cut Cabernet Sauvignon from Alexander Valley. So three unique places in Sonoma, three very unique and special wines. So let's welcome our guests. From La Crema, we have head winemaker, Craig McAllister. Hi, Craig. Hi, everyone. How are we doing today? Good here. And from Pedron Pedroncelli, uh, we have winemaker Monty Reese. Hello, good evening. Hello, thank you so much for being here. And then from Francis Ford Coppola, Coppola we have Evan Schiff, winemaker there. And there he is. Hi, how are Welcome. you? Welcome. Great, I'm so glad y'all are here to talk about your wine, share them, tell the story behind them. Um, but for, first, a little bit about Sonoma, because we're talking about Sonoma today. And you know, people think of, you know, the California and a lot of people think of Napa. Napa has Cabernet and Rolo and maybe some Bordeaux blends. But if you talk about Sonoma and red wines, you can't just pinpoint one red wine grape that you relate to Sonoma. There's just such an interesting diversity. So maybe if you could each kind of speak to why you think Sonoma is so special for creating this um, diversity for these kinds of grapes. And uh, Craig, I'll throw it to you to start. Gosh, I mean, Sonoma really has it all. Uh, you know, I always, I always think from the ground up, uh, we've got fantastic soils here. Then we think uh, above ground, we've got a, an amazing climate uh, that is influenced by the Pacific Ocean here. And, and that provides these perfect growing conditions, in our case at La Crema for Pinot Noir. Um, but if you look beyond uh, the gates of La Crema Winery, there are so many great wines being made throughout Sonoma County. You know, on some of the uh, vineyards that we source fruit from, there is Grenache growing, there's, uh, there's some Merlot, there's Syrah, and that's just in, in such a small area. Uh, some of our Pinot Noir vineyards are over the road from 100-year-old Zinfandel vines, two very, very different wines stylistically, but they're grown within 100 feet of one another. So I, I think, you know, when you think about climate, think about soils, throw in the people, you know, we've got the perfect mix here. I love that, yes. You were just saying all those things that I love about, about Sonoma. Um, so Monty, what about you? Well, I think this webinar is a perfect example of why Sonoma County is so exceptional. We have uh, Russian River Valley, Dry Creek Valley, and Alexander Valley. There's so much difference in the appella every appellation in, right in Sonoma County has such a specific characteristics to grow different grapes. Uh, in my case, Dry Creek Valley is known for Zinfandel. And there's a reason for that is because the topography of the valley, the climate, as Craig was mentioning, we have the influences from the coast. And it really, uh, Sonoma County makes it different from other uh, 
other areas of the country because of that, because we have different uh, locations with different topographies in different climates. And everyone is good for a different grade. So it's just very unique. Yeah. That's why I love visiting Sonoma because I feel like you can yeah. be somewhere different and just really different um, each, each time. So Evan, what do you love about that Sonoma and the diversity? You know, I, I think that a lot of it's been said, but um, I would add in that what we're doing is just showcasing what the area can do. Uh, I think that as winemaking, what we're doing is, like it was said, it's like you're, you're, you're taking a region and expressing that in a bottle. Uh, for customers and experience and it's basically up, us, up to us not to uh, tamper with it so I like uh, that we have that 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 variety that you're referencing and I like that we have the intensity of the flavors I think that California is really one of the things that we we, we offer like the customers is, a, is an intense experience of flavor aroma and everything else finish and pairing well with food and I think that that is like the great weather and also the culture of the people pushing uh, the envelope of, of great wines forward. It's really what we're all about. It's fantastic. Yes. So yeah, sense of place and that intensity and that's something for everyone um, yeah. because they're, they're really it. So thank you. Uh, let's dive into tasting and talking a little about a bit about each of these wines and the wineries and the history. And then of course that, like we just said, the, the place. Uh, where they're coming from. So we're starting with La Crema Pinot Noir. Uh, Craig, maybe you could tell us a little bit about just the history of La Crema in the Russian River Valley. Sure. Uh, La Crema's history uh, goes back 42, 43 years now. Uh, the winery was founded in, in 1979, uh, originally known as La Crema Viniera, which means the best of the vine. Uh, you know, we think today and we hope today that we're still showcasing the best of the vine and putting that in the bottle. Uh, we've since dropped the Viniera part, so we're just La Crema. Um, you know, our history is rooted in Pinot Noir and Chardonnay in this part of, uh, of California. And, uh, you know, this, the, we've spread our wings a little bit. And, and these days we're making wine uh, as far south as Santa Rita Hills and uh, as far north as the Willamette Valley and pretty much everywhere in between. Uh, so we would like to think we've got a foothold in, uh, in most of the preferred cool climate appellations on the western seaboard of California. And your focus there is still on that Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, those, those cool climate grapes, right? Absolutely. Yeah, we're, we're only sourcing fruit from those, those uh, vineyards that are cool climate. So, you know, go back to what I said earlier, that are strongly influenced by the Pacific Ocean and the fog and the marine layer that, that comes in here and just depresses those peak uh, temperatures and gives us a, a nice range between our daytime max and nighttime cool weather, uh, which really promotes great flavor, color and aroma development in the grapes. So we're, uh, we, we know where we're growing and, and we like where we're growing. Good, and I will just put in a plug for the La Crema um, Rosé. That's oh, fun. good stuff. <laughs> Great stuff, um, great summer wine. So, um, but this we're talking about is Pinot Noir from Russian River Valley, which is kind of the heartland of where La Crema um, has its roots. So talk a little bit maybe about Russian River Valley. It's almost like a crew, if you will, for Pinot Noir in California. Why, why is it so well suited for the grape? Yeah, no, I'll lead by saying, I, I think in terms of new world Pinot Noirs, you know, the Russian River is arguably one of the better known, you know, it's, it's got a couple of pairs, perhaps the Willamette Valley, but Russian River Valley, you know, I, I heard about this in New Zealand before coming to California and it's part of the draw to come here. Um, but it does come back to, to the climate and the soils here and, you know, throughout the valley for anybody that's driven around the area, you, you, you wind your way if you follow the Russian River. There's a lot of hills. There's a lot of little sub valleys. There's uh, you know a number of different meso or microclimates throughout the valley that give us a very broad palette of flavour, colour, and aroma that we get to play with and put the wines together from. And you know what we're doing as winemakers and what we're doing as vineyard or grape growers really influences that style to a degree because you throw in picking decisions, you throw in the, your aspect or how the vineyard is, is in the sun, the cultural practices in the vineyard. And, you know, there, there is a wide range of Pinot Noirs that are grown here in the Russian River. 
you know, from the sub 14% alcohol, the very bright, juicy red fruit dominant to the more plush expressions, those riper picks. So across the board, there's something for everybody here in the Russian River for Pinot Noir. Yeah, and then we and then we saw that cool climb with that fog layer that's kind of over the trees, which is just so influential on that. Uh, so let's let's taste this wine. If you could kind of, you know, go back to what we were discussing about that climate, about that aspect, about vineyard practices or, or winery practices, and how that relates to what we're tasting in the glass. Absolutely. So I, I think if we start with the vineyard source in here, and this this really is a true valley blend. Uh, so we're uh, bringing fruits in from uh, what we call West County. So this is an area uh, bordered by the, the towns Sebastopol, uh, Freestone, uh, Grayton, and that Green Valley area there. That brings a lot of red fruited character, a lot of structure and some of the savory element to the wine. And the next very important part for us is what an area called the Santa Rosa Plains, which is just west of the 101 freeway. Here it gets a little bit warmer uh, and we tend to see a lot of concentration, a lot of richness and a lot of, you know, elevated uh, ripe aromatics from there. And so this wine really is just a, a coming together of those two key areas for us. Uh, in terms of what we do at the winery, it's all small batch fermented, uh, a lot of hand sorting, you know, it goes through two sorting processes. Uh, gravity fed into into small tanks and uh, punched down uh, as opposed to pumping the fruit so you know it's all very very gentle and uh, all designed to to you know be, be as as l the least intrusive on the wine as it can possibly yeah. be well, um, you know it's a very delicate grape you have to be gentle it, it is a delicate grape for sure yeah uh, and for us at, at La Crema then uh, this is also matured uh, in 100 percent French oak uh, for about nine months on any given year. So a lot of uh, little layers of aroma here. You know, Russian River tends to give us this lovely expression of blackberry, boysenberry type fruit, uh, black plum and cherry. But then there's the non-fruit characters of black licorice. Uh, you know, we always think sassafras is the slight understory character that comes from some of those vineyards out in the, the more Western areas and in the Appalachian. Uh, but nice concentration of fruit. Mm -hmm. Dude, I like bit. that, the herbal undertones, like, but they're mm -hmm. so, they're very subtle. A little, little bit of that there, yeah, just a, a nice uh, little bit of complexity and some, some exotic spice notes that come, A, from the vineyard, but also from the French oak as well. Uh, and for me, it's, it's about, you know, the oak there to support the wine without really dominating the fruit. We are really trying to showcase the vineyards here rather mm -hmm. than the barrel. So it's, you know, it's a, a word we use so often in the winery is balance. And that is the goal from, from day one when we bring the, the fruit into the winery until it goes into the bottle. It's, it's all about balance. Well, that's why wine is part of life because life is about balance too. Right? It's all about balance, <laughs> right? Balance is everything. Um, yeah, when you talk about this spice, I'm getting this kind of under note of, of cooking spices that are just beautiful. Sure, yeah, and it's, it's not uncommon in, uh, in Russian River Valley Pinot Noirs to, to get these notes of, say, root beer or cola. I think that's, mm -hmm. that's a hallmark of, of the wines that we make here. Uh, for me, it, that comes from those slightly riper expressions of the fruit that we bring in. And as I said earlier, this is just a nice coming together and a lot of layers of aroma, a lot of layers of flavor. And, uh, and the key to it all for me is that juicy, bright acidity that you get in these cool climates. Yeah, yeah it's, it's that... Again, that, that balance of the layers of fruit, the bright acidity, and those like subtle undertones, but it does have, have great structure, but it's just it's beautiful. It's just very easy drinking. It's very integrated, um, sipping it. Um, keep kind of going back for more. <laughs> um, so Pinot Noir is a very food-friendly wine. What, what, what are your favorite choices for dining with Pinot Noir? Yeah, no, well, the, I, I am pretty simple. Um, I think Pinot Noir pairs perfectly well uh, with a, a nice pizza. Uh, pairs perfectly well with a burger. Then maybe if we're going out for you know for a for an evening out, you know I always think duck, think salmon, think those pork dishes. Uh, I think its versatility with with a wide wide variety of foods comes from the the layers of of flavour and, and and aroma there as well, but also that juiciness and the the fine tannins. You know, there's nothing there that's really going to dominate a food or hopefully be dominated by food. So yeah. Uh, it's um, a good one. 
It is, yes, very versatile. And uh, so La Crema, just for, for those who might be visiting Sonoma anytime in the future, La Crema is open for visitors in the Russian River Valley? Yes? Ab absolutely, we are. And the, the La Crema Estate at Sarah Lee's Vineyard popped up on one of the photos there. Uh, I will say that uh, we are open, but it's by appointment only at this stage. So it's uh, important to, uh, to look at the website, which is lacrema.com. There's a lot of information on there for a, level, a number of different tasting options, mm -hmm. picnics and, uh, and self-guided walking tours of the vineyards. So there's, uh, there's a bit of information there for you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Craig, for sharing Pleasure. the wine and the story. Delicious. Um, okay. Next, we are moving on to Dry Creek Valley. Um, Monty, how are you? Great, thank you. Good. So um, tell us a little bit about the Pedroncelli Winery, if I can say yes. correctly, and, and the history in Dry Creek Valley. The Pedroncelli Winery story starts in 1927, okay. when the Pedroncelli family, Italian immigrants, came to the valley and buy a farm uh, on, the, on the end of the valley, west side of Geyserville. Uh, this is on the hillside of the valley, surrounded by already vines there. And there was Zinfandel uh, planted with some petit syrah. That was the tradition at the time in early 1800s in the valley. There were a lot of uh, Zinfandel plantings already in, in Dry Creek Valley. And as a good Italian winery, what they did is um, use the bad wood from those old vines that they were already there and propagating it into new plantings. Until this day, those Zinfandel vines are the ones that we use in our, in our wines. So, um, have, so how old are those? How old are some of those? We um, have uh, still the original vines from the 1927. Wow. Those are very, we got very few of them and they produce very little. They're pretty old. They're ancient, ancient vines, really. Yeah. Um, but the rest of our Sinfandel vines in the state uh, are around the winery. Those are propagating propagations from the original uh, vines. So we got different ages, uh, but they're all way over 30 years old so right and Zinfandel is one of those yeah they're all, all vines, really are. it does so well as it, yeah. as it ages it gives more of that intensity yes really and awesome. um i have to say that uh because the pedroncellis have been here for so long the story of the valley is their story also they go by side by side uh or one it is also uh certified uh sustainable Mm -hmm. That's something we're very proud of, uh, from the vineyards to the winery. We keep very proud on sustainable practices. And the family, the family is still involved in the winery and the day-by-day -day operations. And that's a very, a very hard thing uh, yeah. to find these days. So it really is- It usually little... means the family has to like get along. <laughs> yeah, no, they're, they're wonderful. And, yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's so, great. And the story of the Jelly is still going on. So it's and it's it's wonderful. I love that. I love the family owned part and the history of it. But and they were tell us a little bit about Dry Creek Valley yeah. and Zinfantel. Why are these a little perfect pair? Well, the Dry Creek Valley is really a small appellation in size Sonoma County. It's only 16 miles, 16 miles long. It's no more than that. But we are bordered by the Russian River. Mm -hmm. by Lake Sonoma and the Alexander Valley. So we kind of get a little influence from the coastal uh, temperatures, colder temperatures from the Russian River and that comes from the marine layer. And uh, we get warm days. That's perfect for Zinfandel. And that's the reason why so many people uh, decide to plant Zinfandel in this valley because you have a grape that is, wants to be big, has a lot of mm -hmm. sugars on it. And you got those warm days that uh, helps that grape, but the night when the cold gets in and drops those temperatures, puts breaks on that. And that makes a great uh, environment for Zinfandel. Zinfandel is the most planted grape in Dry Creek Valley. And as a valley, also we have different soils. We got the valley floor that is very sandy and very well-drained. Then we have the benches and the hillsides or Zinfandels are on the hillsides. The Zinfandels for this wine are in the hillsides of the valley. And those are very thin uh, soils with a lot of rock in it, very rocky soils. And what they do is uh, stress the vines. When you stress those vines, you get more flavors out of it. You get more uh, spiciness in our case and some minerality. 
Uh, it depends where you grow your vines, you get different results. Um, Drake Valley is unique for that. You get different Zinfandels and they all taste different because they have been grown in different locations. It's a great uh, little appellation that we are very happy to be part of. Yeah, and I, I, I love that. And then you're talking about stressing those vines where the vines have to work harder. And if they work harder, the grapes um, have more to offer, yeah. which is, I think, wonderful and important. <clears throat> yeah, which like you said, is a high sugar which leads to higher alcohol yeah. and you want that balance and complexity. Well, um, tell me a little bit about the rotation the mother clone. Yes. What is the mother clone? The mother clone is our flagship wine. It's the longest bottle wine in, in Pedroncelli. And what um, this wine represents is actually the story of the Pedroncelli winery. It really has been so, make it for so long. And it's uh, also what we call a um, legacy blend because it has a little petite syrah in it. And that's um, an homage for the original um, uh, winemaking in the valley where there was already side by side Sinfandel and Petit mm -hmm. Syrah. And what the Petit Syrah pours to the wine is a little of backbone. This uh, particular Sinfandel has, um, a, it's very fruity, it's very, has a smooth tannins and uh, a lot of spiciness and okay. that medicina really apports um, some tannins to it that give it more structure and give it more complexity. We, we should be tasting this while we were telling yes. us. <laughs> yes. Yes. So yeah, tell us a little bit, I mean, that with the Petit Syrah and the Zinfandel and, and what's yeah. coming through there on the nose. Is, uh, the goal for this wine is be a food friendly Zinfandel. Mm -hmm. What we do here is uh, pick, base, pick the grapes based on the acidity known the sugars because the sugars always can give you a different uh, results. Um, and we, I don't like to hang too much the Sinfandel on, on the vine. So we we'll get control under with the alcohols. After that, what we do is a very, a very, very small oak treatment. I, we don't want to have the oak on the front of the wine, always on the back and showcase the variety, the Sinfandel, how the Sinfandel tastes, how the Sinfandel uh, aromatics are. And all in the background, you will get some oak. We get American oak, 30% new. The rest is all aged in very old barrels that don't afford any oak to it. Mm -hmm. And the blend, the, the whole thing becomes as a very fruit friendly wine. You got that acidity that mm -hmm. balances the alcohol and get those spice flavors that are always more prominent than the fruit flavors. We got blackberry, but we got a lot of bacon and spices, a lot of black mm -hmm. pepper on it. And it really mm -hmm. makes it a very versatile wine for different types of food. It really is um, a little piece of history in Dry Creek Valley because you, it has been done for so long the same way, but also tells the story of uh, of the, the family who make it and the valley and also the vintage. You can show, you can see in this wine, every vintage, how it changes, even if everything is the same, the same grapes and the same wine making. Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful wine. It has, it has that great Zinfandel intensity yes. that, that you want, but there's also that structural balance. So it's not over the top in, in some no, of those. It doesn't pretend to be yeah. too big. It's just, yeah. doesn't pre it's just um, uh, a food friendly, mm -hmm. very approachable Sinfandel, really. So foods, what foods are you oh. um, pairing with this? Well, everybody knows that a Sinfandel wine is the king of barbecues, uh, but I think this particular wine, the Mother Clon Sinfandel, is my go-to wine with a food that can be uh, different for some people, that is Chopino. Uh, you have the... Oh, yeah. You have the garlicky uh, Italian, Italian spices, tomato sauce with the seafood, you got your garlic bread, and you got your Sinfandel with all the peppery and spices. And it really, I love this combination. It's pretty, uh, maybe a strange combination, but it works. You have to try it. Yeah, I, absolutely. I'm definitely trying that. I love that. Something, something a little different and new, and sometimes those are the best kinds. So, um, and um, Pendroncelli is open for visitors and, and your winery is welcoming everyone to come taste this. Yes, Pendroncelli is open every day uh, 
from 10 o'clock to 4.30. We welcome everybody. You come here, ask questions. We show you the place where you can play bachi. We got a bachi ball court. And yes, have fun. Please come and visit. We love visitors. Yeah. Um, wonderful. Thank you so much, Monty, for sharing this story and this wine. Um, it's delicious and super, just very unique. I love it. Um, okay, we are going to move on to the Alexander Valley and Cabernet. Um, so Evan, welcome. Thank you. Um, so uh, Francis Ford Coppola, I've, I've had the privilege to actually um, speak with him for the show and, um, and heard the story and it's just such a, a, a great story of his love of wine and, and passion for wine. But he did start in Napa, mm -hmm. but then eventually came over to Sonoma and I feel like he had this, this kind of love and passion for Sonoma. Can you tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about what his vision was coming to the Sonoma? Yeah, in 2006, uh, we established this winery, Francis Ford Copa Winery, it's a nice shot of it right there um, as you drive into the property. Um, the property was inspired as an experience. It's an experience for uh, a holistic approach of, of friends, family, and fun, adventure, food, uh, and wine. And so it's definitely a destination, we call it. It's one of the few places in Sonoma County or on the, uh, as you're going up through wine country that actually has a restaurant on the property. And so the idea was you could come to the winery and have an entire uh, event all day and not have to leave for any reason. <laughs> yeah. So it's very, it's beautiful. See, there's a, there's a pool. I should mention that right on the back. Mm -hmm. You it's should. And I, uh, I have been there and it is, I've spent an entire day at this property with my yeah. family, being able to yeah. taste wine, swim, enjoy gorgeous food views. It, it is, he definitely succeeded in making an experience. And I feel like Sonoma, that kind of reflects Sonoma. When I think of Sonoma as kind of that when you're talking about the people, which I think all of you kind of mentioned, there's that kind of familial um, um, thing about, about Sonoma as being. Uh, Definitely, one of the first things we did was reach out to the neighbors and move in and, and um, also to the growers that we source from and really uh, make it more of like a family. And it was de definitely a very close contact. And so the, there's a number of different, um, I guess, uh, uh, varieties and, uh, uh, lines of wine, I guess, lines of mm -hmm. wine that are coming from Sonoma. But the one we're looking at right now is the director's cut. So can you tell us a little bit about kind of what that theme was? I mean, <laughs> yeah, the, the director's cut Cabernet. Um, at first off, I mean, you had a picture of it. But basically, one of the unique things about it is the, uh, the wraparound label. It's actually, it's really fun. It's actually a zoetrope. And if you move it, it actually moves. It, it was, you know, you spin a wheel. It's mm -hmm. like one of those flip cards or- flip uh, I remember my flip books. Yeah, it's, it's actually the earliest uh, motion picture. Um, but anyway, so the, the, the wine itself um, is uh, sub-ABAs, Director's Cut Series and sub-ABAs within Sonoma County. And this one is uh, Alexander Valley, which is, um, so the winery itself sits close to Healdsburg which is straddling basically Dry Creek, Russian mm -hmm. River to the south, Dry Creek uh, to, the, to the west. And then uh, Alexander Valley is coming to the northeast. And then beyond that, further east is Knights Valley and Napa. And to the north is Mendocino and Lake County. So we're basically the northeast. It's a very big appellation. It's a valley that runs um, kind of like north to south, more or less. And there's a, it, there is a lot of different topography in there. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea was to showcase a warm Region. We, we talked a little bit earlier about you know coastal influences, and that's one of the great things about Snow County is that you have coastal zones where you can grow Pinot, Great Pinot, Chardonnay. You have uh, Dry Creek with Zinfandel, and then now we're talking about Cabernet, which is the heat. Uh, so, so Alexander Valley. Tell, yeah, what about Alexander Valley makes that? So I mean, you're, it's warmer, is it? Is it lower right. elevation? It's further from the sea. It's north right. South. Exactly. It's, it's it is further from the sea, and, okay. and it doesn't have that marine. Uh, winds that you can get from typically when you have hotter hot weather and you have a, a coastal breeze coming in, it cools off the grapes. Um, we still do have a cooling effect at night in general, as as that what that's what makes a great wine growing region. But I would say that of all the different areas, it's probably one of the warmest. And uh, Cabernet does definitely needs a lot of heat to fully ripen. It's got a little bit of thicker skin, uh, and it, it and it gets like the sun tan in the sun, so it definitely needs that to soften up and, and to become fruity. And within that 
um, zone of Alexandria Valley. Um, it was mentioned before that here's you know you know you got the valley floor, the bench, and the hillside, right? So you typically for the Cabernet you have more a little bit of a mix between the bench and the hillsides, and then we also have some warmer regions and some cooler regions. And I think that what we typically will do is bring all the wines in and try to showcase this appellation by having that right kind of marriage of all the different flavors coming together. So that you don't just only do hillside or only bench or only valley floor or something like that. We kind of evaluate each individual zone and then make a blend later uh, from barrel. Okay, yeah, to kind of balance the ripeness yes. structure and everything like that. And then Director's Cut does have a couple of other um, varieties. Yes, right. yeah, Chardonnay, uh, Pinot, Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, so we definitely have, yeah. like, like it's been said uh, earlier, is that we have different varietal options. And it's really about marrying the varietal to your growing region, your soil and your rootstock and all the other, like the, we mentioned cultural practices and things like that. So it's definitely matching everything up to optimize it. Yeah. No, I love the, the cinema. There's the, the cinema. Oh, one. yeah, cinema. I actually I have that one right here. Oh, you do? Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a great one, too. That's a, that's a Zinfandel Cabernet blend. It's one of my favorites. Awesome. So see, Sonoma, you can do anything. Yeah, um, exactly. So let's, let's taste through this Alexander Valley Cabernet and maybe kind of speak to some of the aromatics and the structure mm -hmm. and how that's representing um, the Alexander Valley as you spoke of it. Sure. Um, like when I when I taste, I should say like I, I go aroma and visual, and then I go through entry, mid palate, and finish. So right. when I'm looking at it, first off, I'd say that the the color tells you a lot about the concentration of the fruit and depth. Just by it's darker by just visually looking at it. Um, I would say that um, the aroma has a little bit of chocolate caramel and a little bit of mocha, which is nice, a little bit of oak influence. Um, and then as a as the entry, it's got more fresh plum fresh blueberry, uh, it's pretty intense on that fruit. And then it has a little bit of clove, black pepper and anise, which are indicative of the variety of um, Cabernet. Some people would say that it has a little bit of bell pepper, but we tend to steer away from that as being too intrusive. We wanna have like some of that varietal character but not too much. And then on the mid palate, as it's like sitting on your tongue, uh, it's firm melted tannin. So it, of the varieties that you're talking about, Pinot Noir, and Zinfandel, Cabernet arguably has the highest amount of tannin, uh, but that's okay for this variety. It's, it's versatile, it can handle it. If you have enough fruit and tannin, it's kind of a good marriage with some acid and, and whatnot. And it's, it's got definitely a lot of toffee. It's very balanced, it's probably about 50% new barrel equivalent, which means that half the wine's in new barrels, half the wine's in, in, in used oak, uh, mostly French, a little, maybe a couple of American barrels. Very versatile variety. Um, we, we talked about versatility before. Uh, this is definitely one of the ones that, you know, everybody knows Cabernet uh, as a variety. It's very popular. I haven't checked my numbers lately. If, if Chardonnay or Cabernet is on top, I don't know, but they're very up there in terms of recognition in the market. Uh, and then I also in the, in the, um, in the finish of this wine, uh, I get a little bit of a tobacco, great length. And that length to me, it, it tells me that the, there was a lot of good uh, contact with the grapes while they were fermenting. It, it gives you that kind of like, uh, I want to have another sip of the wine and kind mm -hmm. of finish on the palate. So I'd say overall, the wine's got a big length. Yeah, and I and it's a balanced length. Like everything yeah. kind of goes together and fades mm -hmm. out together, which is uh, important. Uh, so Cabernet, also a, a food wine. And mm -hmm. um, when you're thinking of pairing this particular, because it's very approachable mm -hmm. uh, wine, what are your thoughts on, on the foods? Well, you know, I, I always steered more towards a barbecue as well. <laughs> But uh, I'd say definitely savory dishes go well with a Cabernet. Uh, it's, a, it's kind of a more, I would say, you know, rustic wine in terms of the, the tannin. Uh, and that kind of, it needs to have a little bit to, to stand up to. Um, I would definitely pair it with something like maybe lamb or, or beef, uh, all of the kind of the red meat spectrum. But I also think that uh, you, can, you can try it um, with anything that is like maybe um, a... Um, Saute vegetables. I mean, you can try it with a lot of different things, but I definitely would try it with um, maybe uh, something that has a little bit more of intensity as well. Something that yeah. is going to pop off. Like, like for so for vegetarians, like a portobello burger or something. Exactly, that's a great example. Yeah, yeah, savory, rich, um, mm -hmm. wonderful, and I guess I mean we can touch on it again, but you can visit um, Coppola Winery, and um, it is definitely an experience and 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 open. Although if you want to. Utilize the pool and things you need to 
Yes. Way ahead of time. <laughs> Way ahead of time, but it's still a um, great place, uh, museum, restaurant, pool, um, wonderful place to visit. So. Well, yes, thank we, you are, so much. we are open. We are open and ready to go. <laughs> great. Um, so thank you so much for sharing this. I, you know, to, to kind of round up everything, something I think that is really relevant in Sonoma, in California uh, right now is just um, the weather, the climate, um, things that are happening each year, such as fires, heat waves, and that sort of thing. And I think that I know all of you, and, and Monty, you mentioned this earlier, have um, a stake in sustainability in your region. I'd love for you each to kind of speak about what your winery, what you're doing, and, and how that's helping, <laughs> with, you know, of, of what we're doing to kind of push into just being good to that environment. So um, Craig, maybe you can tell us first a little bit about the sustainability at La Crema. Sure. Um, so La Crema is part of Jackson Family Wines and Jackson Family Wines has a, a long history of uh, sustainable practices. And, uh, and, you know, it's drilled into everybody when we, the first day you walk into the winery, we're talking about saving water. We're talking about our recycling streams. You know, we're aiming for, for zero waste going to landfills. Um, but it's, it's, it's way beyond that. I, I think it, it comes back to, you know, the Jackson family want to be a multi-generational wine business. They're not here just for the now. They want it to be for the children, the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren. So everything that they're doing to make the land better than when they found it is, is so important. Um, and that's, you know, there's, there's three pillars there, really. There's the environmental. Um, so we're, we're thinking about water savings there. A lot of uh, investment in solar. And at La Crema Winery, we have 3,000 solar panels on the roof. Uh, we have Tesla batteries that charge during the off-peak hours and release the, that energy during the peak hours to take the pressure off of the grid. And so through that system there, we're offsetting about 70% of the winery's energy needs. So that's a pretty big, bold statement there. But then I think about the people as well. You know, living in wine country has been a challenge the last few years. There's, people have lost their homes. We've all been evacuated from one time or another. So, you know, there's, it's that social responsibility. What are we doing for our people? What are we doing in the communities to support everybody that lives here? Uh, and then there's just the, the sound business sense part of it where, you know, it, it, it's good on the environment. We've, we've lightened the weight of our, our bottles. So you get more bottles on a truck. So you're running less trucks between the winery and, and the warehouse. So that's, you know, the 10,000 foot view. But I'll just go back to saying that it's all with a view to being a multi-generational wine company mm -hmm. and doing the very best for the land and for the people. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Um, Monty, you had mentioned it earlier a little bit about that, that being a pillar of uh, Pedrontelli as well. So tell us a little bit about those, those well, efforts. Uh, yes, uh, Pedrontelli Winery is certified sustainable. Uh, we just continue the tradition from the original 1920s of take care of the land where you work and where you live. Mm -hmm. And it has been a natural, been certified, been not much uh, of our work to do because we were already doing it. Uh, we keep eye on our water usage. We uh, take care of the health of our soils, uh, the environment of our vineyards. We take care that this thing is protected. Uh, waste, uh, minimal waste into every aspect of winery, winery and vineyards. And it really, it comes naturally for us. And we're pretty proud of uh, showcase uh, that uh, certification because it really is who we are and what we what our philosophy of winemaking but also um, life is. So yes, uh, we're certified and we everything we do is on goal for that. That's wonderful. I'm glad that's a pillar of, of who you are. Um, and Evan, I know uh, Francis and, and the winery is just very passionate about the people and uh, the land where they are. What, what are some of the uh, practices about Coppola's work in Sonoma? You know, uh, we work with over 250 growers uh, that source for different programs of our wines. And we, as a company, have rewarded the growers that achieve uh, sustainability with a reward, like a bonus uh, for achieving that. So whether it be Lodi rules or whatever certification program that they want to um, to apply for, uh, we 
have a goal to put sustainability on our labels. And I think, I believe we've already achieved that within Sonoma County. And so we definitely uh, encourage every grower that we work with to, to work in that direction. So I, I feel like it's definitely uh, a big push in Sonoma County and it's, it's necessary. Um, there is a big drought right now in our area. And, um, you know, we get letters in the mail about it, as, as, you know, municipalities around the county that cut back on water, everybody has to do their part. And growers are definitely feeling that. Uh, we were driving around different vineyards earlier this year, um, talking with growers, uh, a big conversation. It's like, you know, where are you getting water from? Are you getting it from uh, the Russian River? Or are you getting it from your own well? Like, where, where is it coming from? And depending on the answer, it, it was what option they had because a lot of growers right now are feeling it and not getting access to the water that they need. If they have a young vineyard, it can be a really big hardship for them. So definitely as a, on the winery side of things, we are definitely partnered with these growers to, um, to, to do the right thing and steward the land properly and, and reward them and, and be proud of it. And uh, so that's, that's basically what we're doing right now is, is looking at the, the grower um, operation side of things, but then also within the winery itself, it's the same thing that has been said, uh, looking at what, what can we do to minimize water use within the winery with low uh, usage of nozzles and the whole spectrum of things of, of minimizing their impact. Yeah, I think I, I think that a lot of people don't know how much water can be used in a, in a winery. And so in, it's a lot of work to kind of cut back on that and still maintain, you know, Definitely. Sanitary, <laughs> sanitary environment, which everybody wants. So, um, so good for you all for, for doing that. I know that's something I think everybody's is on everybody's mind. So, um, uh, well, great. I, thank you so much for all being here and sharing these wines and, and these stories. And you're all three beautiful, wonderful places to visit in Sonoma. So I hope people will, will come taste your wines, tour your properties. Um, we hope you at home enjoy the wines as well. Um, this taste of Sonoma at home. And we also have a video of three Chardonnay that we did a couple of weeks back on our YouTube channel. And a, and a trio of wines for that at wine.com. Um, also super diverse with one great variety, but this has been fantastic. Taste of Sonoma, we'll be back live next year. I hope everybody is able to, uh, to go and experience it one year. Um, but thank you again, Craig and Monsi and, and um, Evan for your time and your beautiful wines. That's true. I wish you well, look forward to visiting myself very soon. Excellent, thank you. Cheers, Cheers. thank you. It's both a science and a form of high art. It's made from the combination of grapes, sunlight, rain, soil, and time. It's raised up in the moments that matter. It's wine. And we are wine.com. We have the largest wine selection in the world, online sommeliers with free advice, and now our powerful new app puts the entire world of wine in your hands. Wine.com, seriously passionate about wine. Download our free app today.